My name's Mary Dono and I've been flooded on many occasions. Being flooded is an appalling experience and people are often forced out of their home for about nine months. So I'm traveling around the country to find out what homes and businesses have done to reduce the impact a flood can have at their home and business level. Today, I'm visiting Martin, who lives on the banks of the River Eyre in Leeds, to find out what he did after he was flooded in 2015. Martin, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me today. Before we look round your house and see what you've done to reduce the impact a flood can have, could you tell me a bit about the flood you experienced on Boxing Day 2015? Yes, we were flooded on uh, Boxing Day 2015 and the water level finally came to about 730 millimetres above this flagstone here. Um, absolutely devastating because the house completely flooded on all levels um, and brought in that terrible silt that comes in and creates so much mess and damage. Um, we knew it was coming um, because we are members of the flood alert scheme, but uh, there's nothing you can do about it. It's inevitable. And although we had flood panels, the whole house filled with water and uh, sadly, that's what we had to deal with. Devastating. We had to move out, switch off the electricity and go and stay with friends. We couldn't stay. You told me that straight after the flood, your wife fell over in all the silt on the floor and that you got a, an amazing amount of community help. The clear up is, is such an effort for everybody. It's, it, you know, you need as much help as you can get. And we were very fortunate to have about 20 members of the community who came down to help us strip out almost immediately. Um, but unfortunately, Fiona slipped on a, a floor covered in silt and broke her arm. So one of the first things I had to do was to take her down to A&E and she came back with her arm in the plaster. So that put her out of action. So it never rains, but it pours. It never rains, but it pours, <laughs> yes. One of the things you told me that I've always remembered is that you stripped out your home really quickly yes. and you believe that that enabled the home to dry really quickly. Yeah, Can you tell I, me a bit more about I that? I actually am a great, immense believer of that. Um, we were um, flooded, I think, on a Sunday. On the Monday, we'd seen the lost adjuster. Um, and on the Monday evening, we had 20 people here pulling out the contents of the house and salvaging what we could. And that has been very important because it enabled us to start the drying out very quickly, but also enabled us to recover an enormous amount of stuff that we would have otherwise thrown away, thus reducing our insurance claim. An example of that is the, all the electrical boxes. There are 22 electrical boxes in the house. Every single one of them was cleaned up and is now back in the house again. It's those sort of things which make a difference and which the insurers like. So Martin, would you now show me round your house and first of all, show me what you've done to try and keep the water out, but most importantly in my book, what you've done to enable your home to recover more quickly should you flood again. So Martin, you've taken this cover off especially for me and I'm fascinated to know just what's going on in there. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, there are two pumps in this room, um, both linked to channels underneath the floor and some plastic membranes so that if any water enters the house, the plastic membranes directed to the channel and the channel is directed to a small sump and the pumps can pump the water back outside again. Um, each of the sumps is, uh, has a battery backup, so that should the electricity fail, then the pumps will run automatically. You don't have to do anything with them, they just work automatically. It's, it's a system that's used widely in basements. So you thought outside the box really, you thought that works in basements, let's try it in my home. Well, it's exactly the same principle. Water comes through the wall, you need to collect it, direct it to somewhere and pump it back outside again. And this system relies on that. And you can tell me something very positive that your home was compromised really, it was challenged in February of this year, 2020, and it worked well. You didn't get any flood water in the house at all, did you? Yeah, in fact, twice. Um, one, because we had a burst pipe in here uh, and water flowed across the floor 
And I found this at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And by three o'clock, we dried out this floor and everything was back to normal. Um, simply because this is a plastic floor and plastic skirtings and uh, they cannot get wet and they're very easy to, to clean up using a, a, a water vacuum cleaner, which I would recommend all people to have at least one of. <laughs> so this is a, a very attractive plastic looking floor, but flood resilient flooring. And you just literally swept the water when you had your birth burst pipe into the sump pump yep. and dry very quickly yes and it didn't actually get on top of the floor um in 20 in this this year did it in no in uh, uh under underneath the floor we've got other pumps as well and they managed very easily to keep up with the load um in um uh 2019 we had 19 hours of water standing so these pumps have got to be very resilient to be able to run for quite some time at very high capacity. So one important bit hint that we're going to give people is to have the pumps regularly maintained uh, annually? Absolutely, yes. Once every year they should be run. Um, the system, um, like our basement system, needs to be um, tested every so often and cleaned and serviced to make sure it's, it's all working. It's the same with your uh, flood barriers as well and flood air bricks. They should all be cleaned and, and looked at at least once a year. It's like a car, you cannot expect it to run without a little bit of attention. So Martin, you've got what, four doors. How do you stop the flood water from getting into your, in through your doors? Well, we've got four flood barriers, which we put on when we get our uh, environment agency warning by telephone. And those also work in harmony with the repointing that we've had done to the lower levels of the wall. And we also have a series of air bricks which are automatic and close when flood water meets them to stop the water getting under the floors. Because flood warnings have their wicked way of coming about half past three in the morning and actually having self-closing air bricks is one less thing for you to do, isn't it? Yes. Um, the other important thing though is that if it is at three o'clock in the morning is to make sure that you have everything in the right place, everything ready, sets of tools, sets of bolts, sets of equipment to be able to put it on that is all serviced and very easily done, particularly if you're not here for perhaps a neighbour to be able to do it using the instructions that you've left. Uh, we have laminated uh, our instructions and leave them with the flood equipment. So basically you've got your neighbours lined up to fit your flood barriers for you if you're not here and it's all clearly labelled and they know where to find things and they can easily put them up in your absence. Yeah hopefully Mary it's all meant to be nice and simple. <laughs>